welcome to you. Back court side here, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. Both these teams have had such incredible seasons getting to this point, Rebecca. After the third quarter, I mean, it really felt like Virginia Tech had taken complete control of this game. How impressed are you by what LSU has been able to do in this sport? Incredibly impressed. And it, and it was the way they have had success all season long. They got to the offensive glass. They were able to score when they did so. Alexis Morris just stepped up with a tremendous amount of confidence when, at the times when her team was having tough, tough time scoring, to the, put the load on her shoulders and made some tough, tough shots. LSU, 11 of 18 from the floor in this fourth. They do not have a turnover. Poole gets it in. There's the foul after the attempted tie-up. And Flaugé Johnson will go to the line, 69% on the season. Virginia Tech out of timeouts. Remember, this is just the first of two semifinals tonight. Coming up, Iowa and undefeated South Carolina. I thought with Virginia Tech out of timeouts, LSU had their players in on the free throw line, but no longer. They back out. Johnson. This is the second. Amor into the front court. It gives it up. Out of bounds. And Virginia Tech is going to back off. Kenny Brooks saying, do not foul. LSU inbounds on the back of a massive fourth quarter. LSU is headed to the national championship game for the first time in program history. Virginia Tech. Just a little more Kim Monkey magic. Kim Monkey's second year at LSU, taking a program that the year before she got there had nine wins. And as you said, bringing LSU to their first national championship game. Nice moment there with Coach Mulkey and Georgia Amor, who had such a memorable tournament. As did all of the Virginia Tech Hokies, but it is LSU who is moving on to the national championship game Sunday afternoon, 3.30 Eastern on ABC as Virginia Tech, this team that has been together, an experienced group that brought the program to new heights, has their season end tonight in Dallas. And Alexis Morris and Angel Reese are standing by with Holly Rowe. You look good in the orange. Did you see my orange outfit? You look like me. You have the same thing? Well, I don't have the same win. You do. You look good. Okay, thank you. Um, fourth quarter, you guys go into that fourth quarter down nine points. What started to turn up for you to win this game? And we had to play defense. We had to come together and believe in each other and play defense. The game wasn't over. We've been in situations like this before. So just trust in the coaches and listen to see each other. You guys held them for almost six minutes without went on that run. Alexis, part of it fueled by your tough baskets. How'd you do it? I'm a senior, man, and I gotta be the glue for this team. Offensively, defensively, I know my team needed a spark, so I had to trust, trust in myself and in my teammates and in my coaches, and that's why we're, that's why we're competing for the national championship on Friday. Right? We just made history. You, you guys had nine new players. Nobody thought you would be standing where you are tonight. How? How have you done it? Hey, we trust God, and God got us here. We believe in each other. LSU understandably fired up headed to the program's first national championship game. They will meet the winner of Iowa and South Carolina. That game is coming up next.
LSU wins it 79-72 over Virginia Tech. Coming up next, it's NCAA Women's Final Four update presented by Capital One, followed by Iowa and South Carolina. Do not go anywhere. The Tigers headed to the first title game in school history. L. Duncan, take it away. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Final Four update presented by Capital One. You see the bracket? What do they say in New Orleans? Then the ball's home roulette like the good times roll, baby. The Tigers you are such a in the problem. national championship for the first time in program history and to do it in Kim Mulkey's second year in Baton Rouge. As for who they will face on Sunday at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, TBD. As we say hello, courtside, I'm Elle Duncan. She's Carolyn Peck. That is Monica McNutt. Incredible. We are going to preview the second matchup of the night. Boy, did we get a treat, and we figured that we would. But let's talk about what keyed LSU. An 18-point swing from the end of the third quarter into the fourth. What was behind it? The key is, with Kim Mulkey teams, is defense. And yeah. they turned up the defensive pressure. The key for this game we talked about was going to be points off turnovers. And uh, Holly gave a report where it was Angel Reese in the huddle said, we are not tired because they were playing tighter the majority of the first part of the game. That's how Georgia Amor was getting open for those threes. They were a step late. They were reacting instead of dictating. Well, LSU went on the offensive, on the defensive end. They got aggressive and that turned things around. Angel Reese told us that the X factor will be if this team can shoot the ball a little bit better. They shot 47% tonight from the field. I think that would count as a little bit better. But beyond that, when the game was tied in the third quarter at 62 all, it was Lex Luthor, Alexis Morris' alter ego, y'all. She hit the free throw to tie the ball game. But the next three possessions were completely indicative to who this LSU team was. They got a steal. Flaw Johnson got involved. That put up a two. Kateri Poole scores off of a defensive rebound and a stop for Virginia Tech. And then Aiden Marie goes up with an, a second chance opportunity and cleans up her own miss. So that's your six point margin as that team began to pull away. We talked about for the first three quarters, LSU was playing four against five. Uh huh. Flaw yeah. Johnson stepped up and made big plays, did not play like a freshman, was not afraid to get out there and get, get aggressive defensively. And that move, she got the steal like Damn. a hard level and dropped to the basket. I was like, oh, she gonna write a Clip song. It. She gonna write a song about that one. I can't <laughs> wait to see if she's got a little flow for us as they're <laughs> headed to the national uh, championship. And again, we were sort of commenting at the time, like, how is it that LSU, a team that's really only second to South Carolina in rebounding, was getting beat on the boards by Virginia Tech? That was a big part of how they made that swing uh, and how they got back in this game. The thing that Pat Summon always says is offense sells tickets, defense wins games, yeah. rebounds wins championships, and LSU brought the rebounding in that second half, specifically in the fourth quarter. We love a good coach speak from the coach, <laughs> Carolyn Peck, here. Uh, all right, so again, a reminder that the final four teams arrived in Dallas a little earlier this week as we say goodbye to Kim Mulkey in that jacket. Can't wait for another one. Student-athletes were welcome with a collaboration of all things Dallas, with the teams being greeted by Lights, Cam.